All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego, North County, San Diego, and just up the uh, five in Orange County is Neil Schaefer, who's in Irvine, Orange County. How you doing, Neil? I'm doing awesome, John. How you doing? Good, good. Neil's a leading authority on helping businesses through the digital transformation of sales and marketing. And let's face it, uh, Neil, right now, a lot of companies who paid lip service or put, uh, as we would say back in Ireland, put it on the long finger, which means like put it into the future, kick the can down the road, if you like, uh, digital processes uh, are now kind of faced with the ramifications of not having good digital processes in place, right? Indeed. I think that all of us that are in the digital marketing or social media marketing, we have never been busier. And when I talk about this on Facebook, all of my colleagues are saying the same thing. It is, it is crazy. So this digital transformation is only accelerating. Yeah. And it's happening for sales too. And it's going to happen more and more for sales. So let's talk about this notion of influencer marketing, Neil, because I think uh, people have heard the term and some people probably understand what it is and some people think maybe they understand what it is and then there's probably a host of people who aren't really sure what it is. So what's your definition of in, in, uh, influential influencer marketing? So, you know, my background, which a lot of people don't know, is, is B2B sales, not marketing. Um, mm -hmm. But I had to wear a lot of hats as like a country manager or regional VP of sales. So I had to do marketing and, and what have you. Uh, you know, I think that influencer marketing, I know it sounds like marketing, but it's a lot closer to sales than you might think. And in fact, a lot of the concepts that I've developed that I describe when I talk about it in my books is really my job working in sales in software. And I worked in a particular industry in the consumer electronics industry where I had to work together with semiconductor manufacturers. Mm -hmm. I had to work together with system integrators, with value-added resellers. There was a whole ecosystem of different companies that I needed to work with and individuals within those companies that could get me leads, that could get me access to other people in the organization that I was trying to sell to, that can help me move deals down the pipeline flat faster and increase the probability that I'm going to close those deals. Those are influencers. Now, mm -hmm. that's two decades ago. Now we have the internet. Now we have social media and we have a lot more people that we can access on social media. Those offline influencers that I talked about, yep. some of them are on social media. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a whole host of other potential influencers that we may have never heard of that are already very active on social media and may have a bigger network and a bigger community than we can imagine. So that's and where I think from a, from a sales perspective, when we look at influencer marketing, it's how can I leverage my partners? How can I leverage other people to help me get leads from a marketing perspective it's how do i leverage other people on social media how do i tap in their communities for a variety of marketing objectives but from a sales perspective it's a lot more simpler those objectives are very clear yeah, yeah but i guess there's a lot of uh, a lot of sales people tend to well let's face it, a lot of sales people tend to be very binary in their approach right and they're like okay neil maybe i'm connected with you can you refer me into anybody to sell my product that's probably the level. I mean, you know, for reality, that's really the level of influencer marketing. That, uh, that's why I connected with you on LinkedIn, isn't it? I connected yeah. with you because I wanted to introduce you to all my contacts I've known for 20 years, even though I just <laughs> met you. <laughs> yeah. So how, do you, so how do you advise salespeople how to leverage this in a more, say, shall we say, elegant or sophisticated and, and a more effective way? Because let's face it, we all get bombarded on LinkedIn by people who, who just want to sell us stuff without ever knowing anything about us. Yeah, this is the problem. It's been going on for more than a decade. Uh, we used to have a social media app called Foursquare. And it's where you yeah. check in. It's, I, I remember once checking in in Newport, <laughs> checking into a coffee shop. And, you know, some realtor was the mayor. And when he popped up, he had this message, like, come see me to buy a house. It was, it's an example. There's a lot of really, really smart salespeople out there that are really yeah. savvy. Yeah. But when they get to technology and social media, they try to find the shortcut. They try to automate it, right? The problem is just like I told you that those offline experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is about relationships and developing relationships. You're not going to get anywhere with any, no one's going to give you a lead unless you build that relationship first. And you know, all salespeople know this. I teach marketers this W I I F M what's in it for me. What's yeah. in it for them? Why should they want to connect with you? Why? And, and often it's you giving first, right? It's you with, with LinkedIn. If they're publishing content, it's actually going in and reading you know, gosh forbid, we're going to read their content. We're going to like it. We're going to actually give a meaningful comment on it. 
And this yeah. is what I teach brands. If you want to create relationships with influencers, there's a lot you can do in social media to accelerate that before you ask to connect. That's what I'm talking about here. Yeah, and, and I love that because I, I've done a couple of uh, podcasts on that recently. And uh, my, my point was, if everybody is publishing content and sharing content, who's actually reading it? And, and, that, and, and my point kind of facetiously, but a true one to your point is, is, is that people are either pushing out content or as you say, they're just going on and clicking like or share and, and hoping that, that that's enough to get you all excited that you want to talk to them instead of actually reading the content and, and commenting and, and showing that you're investing some time and respect to the person, right? That you're not just trying to, as you say, shortcut. You know, my blog, neilshafer.com, gets thousands of views every day. But you'd be surprised at how few comments there are. You'd be surprised if you were to comment on a post. And if you were to do that for a few posts in a meaningful way, this is exactly what a company called Buffer did. When yeah. Buffer just started, they were only a WordPress plugin. They were commenting on blogs that had WordPress that, that shared social media and wrote about social media. Now they are, they are a company that was built on this very concept that anyone can do. But guess what? You can't automate it. You can create a process around it and you can make it an efficient process where you're just, you know, one influencer a day for 30 days, five yeah. minutes. It doesn't, it's like anything else, right? It's all about that daily routine that salespeople need when it comes to social media and LinkedIn. Add that little piece in, add a little influencer piece in. And I guarantee you after a month of doing it, you're going to see something. So, uh, so what would, uh, let's see, what, what, would a, what would an influencer look like for some people? What's the profile of an influencer? Because then some people start chasing around just trying to connect and with everybody under the sun and chase them and hope that the volume game is going to pay off. Yeah, you know, when we talk from a sales perspective, it's a little bit different than if we were talking sure. from a marketing perspective. So from a sales perspective, it's anyone that might be able to, you know, introduce you into an organization, whether they work at the organization or maybe they partner with that organization. So, you know, when we look at it from an influencer marketing perspective, mm -hmm. an influencer always is a content creator, right? right. They are they're blogging, they are maybe creating videos on YouTube, they might be podcasting. Um, you know, this is like the top 1% of the internet population are content creators. So mm -hmm. if you find people like that, that are actually blogging on LinkedIn Pulse or for their company, um, then that's awesome. You know, these are people you can tap into. Even if they're not in the right department, even if they're in the marketing department, there's nothing that doesn't stop you from engaging with them and potentially building this sort of win-win collaborative relationship that really is at the heart of influencer marketing. So, you know, generally speaking, when, when we talk about it from a marketing perspective, they're a content creator and they have a minimum. They don't have like 10 followers on Twitter, right? right. And the definition used to be like, a, you need to be a celebrity, but now it's like, you know, if you have 500, even a thousand followers or 500 mm -hmm. plus connections, you have some bit of digital influence. And the next thing to do is, and this is great if you have sales navigator, is have they posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days? right? You want to find the people that post information. And number one, it gives you the ability to engage with them. And number two, it opens up the possibility that should you do something together, they may post that content as well. Yeah. And I think that's a, and I think that's a really interesting point there that you made about the, about looking at influencers and realizing, yeah, if somebody today publishes a lot of content and they have a thousand users, I mean, chances are those, those are probably a thousand genuine followers as opposed to uh, once upon a time, you know, you'd have 50,000 or 100,000 and 90% of them were bots or fake yeah. anyway. Absolutely. Uh, so I like that. I like that concept of it's a deliberate approach, right? And it's a respectful approach because you're actually, number one, you're acknowledging their, their expertise, their, their subject matter expertise or whatever. And you're actually uh, respecting the, the effort that they put into producing content of value. Yeah, you know, I was raised under the methodology of solution sales, right? Mm -hmm. So two big things, two big takeaways here. Number one, you're providing a solution. So when you're reaching out to someone, you're helping them, right? Yeah. And number two, you don't know the solution they need until you ask questions. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, you don't go to a doctor's office and say, I have COVID-19. <laughs> you go, you explain, the doctor asks you questions, you explain it, yeah. then you test it. It's the same thing when you reach out to people. You don't know what they want, right? If they want anything. But by asking questions, and it's not just this generic LinkedIn connection template, sure. but, you know, generally saying, hey, we're in the same industry. Um, you know, what is it that keeps you up at night? Or, you know, what sort of content ideas? I don't know, right? There's a lot of different conversations. You yeah. Have. But it's really, you know, I think this is in a salesperson's DNA 
to be successful at this. You just got to get out of the mind. You know, the, the, the one thing I say, the one concept I like to tell people is it's new tools, old rules. And that's really the best mm -hmm. way to think about this. It's all about relationships. You have new tools that help you do that digitally, dynamically, 24 seven, use them wisely because the old rules of social networking, of developing relationships, of sales have not gone out the window. They're still as strong as ever. Yeah, because if you think about it, well, I, I used to love the analogy. It's like it's like it, back in the old days, uh, as it is now, of actually physical networking, say going to a networking event. You don't walk into a network event and shout the same words at every single person, right, until you maybe hit on one. You actually engage in conversations and you do the discovery. And if there's something of mutual interest to both people, you can, can, can continue the conversation. And if not, you tend to move on until you find the right people to engage with but you don't walk in with your broadcast message and just shout it at every same thing at every single person right so you know now we're looking at not just social networking not just on linkedin for direct lead generation but mm -hmm. now we're looking at indirect lead generation right it's finding right. those people the networking meeting that they're not going to become your customer sure developing a relationship with them you become good friends with them you can see the potential for future business yeah yeah because let's face it i mean everything today is trust and reputation isn't it and if you if you come to somebody through somebody that they trust and they know who's discerning and is not just going to send anybody their way then you've you've got more than a foot in the door absolutely so um so what are some of the things that people can do say on linkedin today to use it a little bit more elegantly than maybe some people are well, I mean, there's a lot you can do. I'd say, first of all, um, you can become more of an influencer yourself mm -hmm. by publishing content, sharing content, engaging with other people. Uh, talk to your marketing department. They would love to have you share their content. <laughs> talk to your customers. Ask them, where do they get content? Who do they follow on social media? What blogs do they read? That's, you know, what, if you were to create content or have a webinar or a white paper, what is it that they would need so that they can, you know, give it to the CEO and get approval for your, pro for your project, whatever it is, right? There's a lot I believe you can be doing above and beyond this tactical stuff that a lot of people talk about. Sure, you build up your network over time, but really, you know, engage once you build up your network. Don't you? And I'm not just talking about the automated, hey, congrats mm -hmm. on your job anniversary, which a lot of people <laughs> spam, right? Um, generally engage in the feed. And when you engage in the feed, other people see that as well. And if you engage in a wise way and you leave really meaningful comments, you might have some people say, hey, I saw your comment. We'd love to connect with you, right? Or, uh, you know, LinkedIn groups are not what they used to be. They're, sure. I wouldn't say they're, they're making a comeback, but there might be potential there. I don't know. Um, or mm -hmm. commenting on an article. And then look at the other people that commented in the article and look for people that you somehow missed, but that might be good, you know, lead generators or, or even potential customers. So now it's more of a, uh, more using LinkedIn as a more intelligent source of business intelligence and taking the time to really find those opportunities. And I think that's the key there is actually taking the time. And that means actually, uh, as we said before, it's actually reading the content and you know, investigating who the people are, like reading through the comments and then engaging in a meaningful way. And I think that's the key. It, that really is the key for me because I agree with what you said earlier about uh, you, you can have a blog and you know I publish a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, and you just don't get that many comments. Uh, and, and if people, and I notice when somebody writes something meaningful, that when it means yeah. they've read it, not like great post. When I get great post, I know, yeah, you didn't read it. <laughs> exactly. You can, because there's so much automated spam and people just trying to create backlinks and, and, uh, and yeah, you know, and it's not just LinkedIn. It could be, yeah. you know, B2B sales, Twitter. If, yeah. if they're not active on LinkedIn, they're not active on Twitter, it's going to be a lot quicker. And I've, I've developed business on Twitter and just little things that people have said to me over direct messages on Twitter, they've, they've sparked relationships uh, that have business value. So uh, it can be anywhere. It, it might, you know, I do social selling trainings and it's obviously LinkedIn centric, mm -hmm. but more and more younger salespeople want to know about Instagram. And yes, it, it yeah. is a way to engage. It's, it's a different way of engaging, but it's actually more in line of this sort of relationship building of actually engaging with their content. And it's easier to do that on Instagram. It's just a photo and, you yeah. know, you leave a sentence or two, but yeah, you, you could use that in the exact same way. It's not just LinkedIn. Yeah, and I think you have to get creative. And I think now, particularly as a lot more people are remote, obviously, or virtual, and are probably going to be either for a, a extended period of time temporarily or for good. Uh, I think that you need to use all of, all of these tools. But as you said, I like what you said about uh, new tools, old rules, uh, and that is like to to engage 
engage properly with them and get away from this. Here's, here's my pet peeve on, on uh, LinkedIn. So I get a nice connection request from somebody and it's nicely written and all of that. I know where this is going already, but keep going. And, and I hit accept and then I get the automated message immediately, which is trying to sell me something. And I'm just like, come on. I, I mean, go, people I have got to get away from that. Yeah, I block all those people. And I hope that LinkedIn yeah. has an algorithm where if they get enough blocks, they're blocked from using the platform because that has yeah. happened. And if you use some of those automated, I've had people, Neil, you know, they comment on a LinkedIn post that I wrote like eight years ago, right? And they're like, yeah. Neil, you know, I've been kicked out of LinkedIn. What do I do? And when I ask them, they've been using one of those automated software platforms. I'm like, dude, yeah. what are you thinking? You yeah, know? exactly. I mean, common yeah. sense here. So yes, you know what? Sometimes shortcuts seem like the best solution, but you know, LinkedIn, you don't want to mess around with it, right? You no, wanna, no, no. You want to respect that because if you're kicked out of it, imagine what your life as a salesperson would be like. Exactly. I think that's a great, uh, great message for people to take away is just you know, be very careful. And, and, and by the way, any of these tools that promise you, oh, we're 100 percent safe, it'll never happen to you. Nonsense. It'll happen to you. I will it'll say, happen. though, when you ha make genuine, personalized LinkedIn connection requests, they will get accepted most of the time and they can lead to relationships of business value. I've seen this happen. I do this for my clients mm -hmm. and it's amazing. As long as the person you're trying to connect with, you've done your research, they're aligned with what you're doing and you really personalize that message. I mean, you can have a standard template, but you yeah. still want to personalize it somewhat. You can really go far on LinkedIn, believe me. And yeah, and I think that that's the point. Like I say to people today that if you are, if you're polite and respectful in your communications, you'll probably stand out today. It's an unfortunate fact of life because a lot of communication is so lackadaisical and, and uh, casual. Same thing as you're saying on LinkedIn, if you go that extra, just, and, and it's not an even extra mile, it's an extra couple of footsteps to personalize that, you will stand out because that's, that's the upside or the silver lining when everybody is behaving badly is that when you start behaving well, you stand out. Yes. And for my clients, you know, and some of them, you know, small business owners, I, my agency will sort of run the LinkedIn account of their CEO, mm -hmm. uh, the personal page. And, you know, we'll wait, we'll wait a month before we message that person, right? And there's, the, you know, it's sort of acceptable. Hey, by the way, just letting my network know, doing a webinar, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is, something of value. But when you do it immediately, people are like, oh, okay, you're just one of them. So yeah. have some patience. And if you wait the right amount of time, and if you wait the right amount of time again to contact them, you're going to be really, you're going to do. So it's like, we talk about networking, dig your well before you're thirsty, build pipeline before you need the sales. It's the same thing, build that pipeline. So if you have enough people, you don't even need to do it in a month. You can wait two or three months because you have so many people you're already in contact with that it's developing the leads. And the longer you can wait before you contact them, I think the more successful you're going to be because it looks less spammy. It looks like, it looks less like you were just connecting with them to send them that message. Yeah, I think that's really good advice for people is to show a little patience. And as we all know, patience isn't, uh, isn't everybody's uh, strong point, especially when you're in sales. But um, I think that's a really good message for people. And the other thing is, you could just think about it on a practical level, right? There's more and more people are at home. Uh, they're, they're, they're more apt to pay attention to and read the things on, that are happening on their LinkedIn account than probably maybe they ever were because they don't have the commute times. They're maybe feeling slightly less rushed. So now is the time if you're doing what Neil has been uh, advocating here, if you've been doing that and you've been patient, you can probably reap quite a good harvest right now. And people, believe it or not, are also reading emails. So I've done some mm -hmm. emails. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised at how high those open rates and the click rates are. So yeah, people are there, they're online and they're hungry for information and advice. Yeah, but I would give one piece of advice to people who are doing email campaigns. Um, I'm here, we're here for you, those kind of ones. Like once you get about like 10 or 15 of those in a row um, about the current crisis and sort of we're here for you and all that, it, I mean, I prefer something a little more practical, put it that way. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, listen, Neil, this has been great. Uh, Neil Schaefer, all of Neil's information will be in his contributor bio, links to his website and all he does. But before we go, Neil, please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. Well, uh, my name is Neil Schaefer. You can read all about me on neilschaefer.com. Uh, you know, as uh, the introduction John gave uh, said, I help businesses with their digital transformation. So uh, part of that is actual consulting with companies. 
on social selling, on digital and social media marketing. Some of it is doing in-house trainings, I do a lot of social selling trainings for corporations. Um, some of it is actually implementing. And uh, I do have an agency where we'll implement marketing uh, and even take over LinkedIn profiles of executives. So it's, it's a combination of different things. I've also written a few books. Uh, interestingly enough, just on March 17th, in the midst of the pandemic, I did publish a book uh, called The Age of mm -hmm. Influence, uh, How to Leverage Influencers to Grow Your Brand. So uh, that's obviously something that if you're interested in this topic, you can read more about. And I have my own podcast, Maximize Your Social Influence. So if you want to learn more about how to uh, build, uh, leverage, and monetize influence in digital and social media, that's the podcast for you. Excellent. And congratulations on the new book. And hey, March 17, St. Patrick's Day. That's a pretty good day to launch a book. Indeed it is. <laughs> all right. Listen, thanks a lot, Neil. Thank you all for listening. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.